Praise the Lord. Welcome to AIM. Guys, we're here. 50 acre farm. Yep, I'm right here by the roadside. I thought I'd show you my face. Um, I want to show you guys a few things that's going on around here. There's not a whole lot of update from the last time I came. A lot has been going on, but a lot of the work has been put into the corn. Harvesting the corn. Well, it was harvested, but taking it from the corn house right over here and taking it off the cob and then um, bagging it up. So I'm going to take you around a little bit up here at this part and we'll see what's going on up here on this side of the house. Okay, let me turn you around. Okay, so here we are. Here's the view. This place... Um, Somebody had come and harvested the cassava. So this is what it looks like when they harvest the cassava from here. Yeah, so the sticks you can plant, replant back in. And there's a bunch of them that are perfect for planting. I'll show you those over by the corn house. So yeah, this whole part was harvested. And we have the plantain here. So I'll take you guys, it's been a while since I walked you guys to the edge of the property here. So here's the house that my husband built and the corn house. And then we also have the small corn house down at the neighbors. So here's how it is. This is the walk from the driveway of the house. So we actually have a driveway, guys. I'm just thinking about that. We have a driveway, we have a house. Um, we would like to get electricity over there, but it takes some time because it's expensive. I think it's about uh, almost 2,000 CDs per pole, roughly. I'm just guesstimating, guys. So like 4,000 CDs to get the two poles, maybe with transportation and everything, 5,000 to put them in. I don't know how much it would cost. So maybe five or 6,000 to get the poles, and then you have to get the wiring and stuff. We have provisions there, but we don't have the wire. This is the edge of our property. We do not have the wire um, run through the house. We have the conduit and everything um, cemented in, but we don't have the wire and we don't have the switches and the fans and the, the light fixtures. So those things we don't have um, in the house right now. So those things too will cost. I don't know if my husband, I didn't ask him about the estimate of that, but the poles I think are 1,700 a piece, Ghana CDs, a piece. So it would be, you know, your regular household electricity pole. And then you have to get two of them to run it from where the electric line is to the house. So you would need two. So we're looking to do that. And then, you know, of course, guys, we have to get the money for that. So um, the farm isn't cheap, but eventually the profits will pay off. You see the plantain is still coming. And there's a new flower of the plantain right there. So it's still producing, still producing. And all of this cassava here, I don't know when it has to be harvested. Okay, I'm gonna take you down here to this corner. So anyway, that is, um, I would like to do that, but as, finances allow we have to prioritize the projects that we're working on right now 
So hopefully we can get some electricity to the house and it will make it easier for somebody to come and stay there. We also brought a barrel that will catch the rainwater off of the roof. We've been renting one and um, yeah, I don't know how much it is. Guys, it's not much to rent it, but still you rent it every day. It will cost a lot. So right here will be the border of the property, I believe. Let's check over here. I think this is someone else's cassava. Yeah, this is someone else's cassava. And down that way is our neighbor where we have our small corn house. If you saw some of the very early video. And then um, he's also keeping the cat for us right now until we get somebody in the house so i learned that which is good and um yeah so that's what's going on we would love to get electricity run there but um we're having to do other things first so we'll see how that goes my prayer is that we would get enough money to get electricity there. Our farm manager will be staying there then. It will save us money on transport for him to come and go to the farm all the time because it's a little bit far. So the transport can get a little costly, but we do need someone here on the farm. We do need someone here. So that is our plan. That is our goal. Those of my viewers who are praying people who can help us pray towards that goal of getting electric to the house. Having the funds to get electric to the house so that um, it will be a little bit better. We will be able to have the farm manager here several days, you know, staying over several days. It will help him because he is a worker, guys. He likes to get up and work. So if he can get up early and get out here before the sun starts beating down, then he can go and take a little rest in the afternoon when it's hot and then go back out in the evening. So that's what he told me. He told me that a long time ago that, that that would be ideal for him to be working like that. So, yeah. So we hope and pray that we'll be able to do that. So I'm just walking you through. I don't want to walk back on the roadside. We'll walk through the farm so you guys can walk through the farm with me. So I see a lot of the leaves are dying, I guess, because it's getting dry. So... Hopefully, everything will come on good. Here's the coconut. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll have to see as we go because the leaves are yellowing a bit on the coconuts too. And I know it's dry season. and It's kind of like in the U.S. We have our winter, summer, spring, fall, winter. We have all those seasons on each season and it's... Um, the way the plants react to it. So we'll see how these are going to do. They seem very strong and healthy. So I'll have to ask. And if I forget to ask, I guess my husband will always see the videos. And then I'll, I'll ask him. But I'm not sure. I'll try to ask him when I get back over there. I'm not sure on why the leaves are yellowing. It's just the water and they'll be okay and rainy season comes and they'll get back to their green, beautiful color. So I didn't bring my stick. I should have brought my stick. I should have known I wanted to walk back through here. There's contumery. So here we have cassava and plantain for the most part. So when we get closer to the house, I'm going to show you the little things around the house but that'll be a different video 
I just wanted to show you guys this side of the house and what we have planted over here and how big it is. So this one is looking really, really nice. Yep. Aha, somebody just gave me dandelion to plant in my garden because I know it's medicinal. And we have a lot of it right here. Imagine that. Imagine that. And I don't know what this tree is over here. Not really sure what kind of tree that is. Is it avocado? Or is it a fruit tree? I don't know, guys. We'll have to wait and see. It might be avocado. It kind of looks like avocado. But it could be mango. I don't know what it is, guys. I don't know. I do not know. Guess we'll find out. Hopefully, now that the signs are in place. You see the house right there. Mm -hmm. And hopefully now that the signs are in place, um, we won't get people taking the stuff from the farm anymore. So that's uh, the information I got. Once you have the signs up, people won't come and take the fruit and take things from the farm. So we'll see how that works. Either way, it's a farm. It's out in the open. We don't wall it in, fence it in like... You know, we might do in the U.S. So those are the um, little challenges. I know if you guys were walking out here and saw some good fruit, you might you might uh, take some for yourself too. <laughs> so there's the coconut on the borders. That's border coconut. And then back in... Here we also have the other coconuts planted. So the border coconut was planted first. There's one over there. Yeah, so we'll take um, another walk. Hopefully those two things we'll find out. And I'll try to get those things answered in another video for you guys. And we'll see how it is. This is a uh, palm, palm nut, I think. Or is it a different type of coconut? I'm not sure. We'll find out. So I'll get those things answered. Um, the Lord willing. About the yellowing of the coconut tree leaves. And also see what this tree is. I think it might be avocado. Guys, tell me. Tell me in the comments. I know you know what it is. It is really, really nice. It's nice to have some of these trees here in the midst. I don't think it'll hurt anything with the coconut because we don't have a lot. It's just scattered here or there. Papaya, avocado is what I think it is. Mm -hmm. You probably pluck one of the leaves and smell it. And smell it. I think it. I think it's avocado. Yep. All right, guys. I'm gonna let you go at that. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm still a little bit um, recovering from my trip, so a little bit tired, but we're gonna get it. I'm excited to be here at the farm, 50 acre farm. Guys, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, you just want to reach out. If you want to inquire about pricing or farmland or anything like that, go to the website. It's always in the description box, aaimcs.com, and go to the Contact Us page. And, um, yeah, give my husband a shout on WhatsApp, and he'll get back with you or... If you call him, um, a lot of times he just answers the phone if he has it and has signal. Sometimes out here on the farm it can be a little sketchy. But for the most part, he can get your call and get you the information you need. So AAIMCS.com. 
and contact Maxwell Mensa and he will get you all the information you need. All right, guys, till next time, God bless you.